ओम श्री साई राम एक दूजे से प्रेम करो मेरा साई प्रसन्न होगा मेरा बाबा प्रसन्न होगा साई मेरा मैं तेरा ये है प्रेम की बहती धारा साई प्रेम की बहती धारा साई प्रेम की बहती धारा ओम श्री साई राम टुडे आई विल बिगिन विथ अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट मेरेकल दैट स्वामी डिड विथ वन ऑफ माय कजन सिस्टर्स I don't know how I forgot it for so long. It was in nineteen late nineteen seventies. Um, those days, Swami used to come to Mumbai at least uh, twice in a year, January third week and uh, for twelfth May, the Dharma Shetra day. And I had started my regular bhajan center at uh, Saint Lam in our house. and i used to give talks to my own cousin brothers sisters relatives and uh, tell them about swami and they all were very much impressed and they in fact each one of them practically all of them had visited puttaparthi at least once so this cousin sister of mine she is one of the most beautiful persons in our family with very fair complexion and uh, Uh, blue eyes she looks like a foreigner and uh, she is now about 80 i believe she is at least 10 years older to me and um, she was married to a air force officer who later joined the air india and uh, she had this eye problem so she used to wear contact lenses because those days wearing specs was not so much in fashion nowadays even the children are wearing it those 70s it was a taboo like i mean see, even i did not wear specs though i had number till 11th when i went to college i had to wear it so she wanted to avoid wearing glasses because that would affect her beauty appearance so she started wearing contact lenses and those days in india contact lenses were not so much the technology was not so advanced 70s so she used to wear contact lenses and she will be playing kitty party dance everything she was a modern girl like and late night sometimes she will be very tired she will forget to remove the contact lenses or she will not feel like removing the contact she will sleep off with the lenses so she developed some scratches in the retina in her eye and uh, start burning and paining like anything so she went to all the doctors available in mumbai that time and because she had privilege of uh, getting free passes her husband was a pilot first an air force pilot and then the air india pilot so she even went to some foreign countries and but everyone said now oh, this has to be operated upon and because you have developed scratches in your retina or something like that i don't remember exactly but there was a huge problem with that so once when swami came to dharma kshetra mumbai in month of may i think it was 77 or 78 um she wanted to uh test swami like she didn't tell me this but later on she revealed and she wanted to have darshan and so i told her you'll do one thing because there will be a lot of crowd and i was sevadal so i said i will arrange passes for you and my aunt uh, shilanti my bua she would also accompany her 
and you both come and give her the address of course she was living in santa cruz she knows the all the ways so i handed over i told her on phone there was no mobiles those days i told her on the phone landline that uh, i'll be on the gen side i cannot come on the lady side but i'll keep your passes at the entrance gate there will be one uh, our sevadal from ulasnagar shobha didi i believe uh, she is also no more now um, so i said she will you is ask about shobha didi and she will give you the passes she will take you to the front enclosure so now this is what she revealed to me after the darshan was over she said when she was uh, trying to get ready to come to dharmakshetra she went to her small temple in her house and uh, of course she being a sindhi and married to punjabi she was born in jalandhar punjab and they had this guru guru nanak dev maharaj and she had taken naam the mantra from i believe radha swami a great saint so it is uh, understood that once you take naam once you take the mantra from a guru then you don't have to go to any other god any other form of god or guru there is a restriction once you take the naam means you have to follow only that path even swami used to tell foreigners once you follow any spiritual guru don't go from here to there then follow that guru only don't keep on changing like monkey mind and no need to change your guru once you have seen me or heard me or been cured by me you follow your own path your own guru and you realize that you are actually coming to me because i am in every form this is so very simple direction so this sister of mine um she prayed to guru nanak dev ji maharaj ki now my brother has called me and she has arranged a pass also for me i am going to have darshan of some other guru satya sai baba i don't know if it is acceptable to you or not so you gave me a strong indication that i should go or not so that was her dilemma she told me on that particular day her driver did not turn up that was sorry uh, she had this problem of driving the car also she is a best driver but being a crowded place so she was thinking she was in two minds so my aunt also came to her and both were deciding whether to come or not that point in time a lady from the second floor she was on the third floor probably she came and she said oma today my uh, driver has not come and uh, my car is there but if you could drive for me i want to go to dharmakshetra you know satya sai baba has come and i want your help i know you drive very well so now she thought that this is a indication because her car was not in proper condition and this is the lady who has car and her driver has not come and she is requesting her to come along with her and drive the car to dharmakshetra so this was not a coincidence she believed this is a indication rightly so so she came to dharmakshetra and because it was swami had already come and sat on the stage bhajans were going on they were late because of the crowd parking the car and everything now when they reached they could not find the person where i had kept their passes because swami was on the dais no way that she could go to the front so they just managed to get some place at the back side she had got her binoculars she was wise enough so she started having darshan of swami with the binoculars swami was sitting far away on the stage in dharmakshetra so while having darshan of swami bhajans were going on and swami was giving talam as he normally does for bhajans she prayed she said as she prayed to swami swami i have come actually uh, for this for medical problem because my brother harish told me that you can even cure cancer so i have actually come for that purpose if you could please bless me i'll be very thankful like that she prayed and immediately swami gave abhyas the pose she saw with her binoculars swami did like this the moment she prayed she got that abhyas the from swami so she removed her binoculars but when she removed her binoculars she saw that swami is in divine mood and like this 
So again she put the binoculars. Again she saw Swami giving Abhayasta pose. It happened two, three times. So now she was in doubt whether I am imagining some hallucination because without binoculars she is looking at Swami sitting far away on the chair like doing like this. Because she was thinking, why would Swami bless me from sitting on the chair? I am sitting so far off. So what she did, according to her, she told my aunt who was sitting beside her, Aunt, you look at Swami and give me the running commentary what Swami is doing at this moment. And she put on the binoculars. So the aunt said, yes, I can see Swami is doing like this and giving talam and bhajan and going on. At that point in time, she was seeing Swami is Abhayastha pose. This was a miracle for her. After this, when she came back, she went for the checkup of her eyes in Mumbai. The doctor found there were no scratches in her eyes or retina anywhere. No more scratching, no irritation, no burning, nothing. This is how divinity works. He gives his visiting card as he says. But at the same time he says, you can't drink the entire ocean if you want to know the taste of the ocean. You can't drink the entire ocean. You have to taste it at one point. Yes, it is salty. Another point. Yes, it is salty. Three points, two points, three points. And then you should assume that the entire ocean is salty. Because you cannot... It is in, not in human capacity to drink the entire ocean to know the taste of the water of the ocean. It is neither required, needed or nor it is practical. So this is how Swami gives his presence. Till now she is a devotee. She had come to Puttaparthi many times. So this is the divinity, how it works even for an individual. And Swami is mantra. She asked me, does Swami give any mantra like our gurus give? I said, first of all, you should not change your mantra or your guru. But you are asking Swami's mantra. Swami's mantra for his all devotees, one mantra. Bhaja Seva. Sing his glory and serve the human society. Because Swami says, human society is manifestation of God himself. Mukh me Ram, Hath me Kaam. Lips should pray, your mind should pray, your heart should pray, but your hands should be busy doing serving others. Parupkar or Thamidam Shariram. This body has been given to us only to do seva to others. That is the purpose of human birth. There is no other purpose. Today I received one post on WhatsApp and I circulated amongst my group. A person, a worker, daily wage earner, who used to travel 100 kilometers every day by bus. Fortunately for him, the bus started from his house and the last stop was at his working place. So he was beneficiary of that and he used to always get a good seat and he would, he was all eligible to keep sitting but what would this gentleman do is that during that journey he would share his seat with at least three to four persons whenever he got, got a chance to sit he will ask the other gentleman to occupy the seat and he will keep standing and when inquired why you are doing like this he said i am a poor man i am not highly educated I don't have money. I don't have any big education. I don't have any resources to serve God. I do this, my daily work, my labor, my job for my family. But what can I do for God, for society? Because human, this human society is manifestation of God. So this is my contribution. If I can help one person every day, I find any person looking tired, 
I offer him my seat. That gives me immense satisfaction. As such, I am standing for eight hours for my work. Two hours more, who cares? This is my small contribution to his creation, my offering to my God. This is the attitude. We don't need big riches. We don't need big opportunities, big positions of authorities. Many people say, no, we want to serve the society. So first we must occupy some position of authority, some power some political power even in samiti they want to have some power to serve god you don't need any power any authority you need a big heart there is a small story on that that once a rich lady she came to a shop to buy a sari for her maid servant. In her colony there was a shop and she entered and she said show me a sari. So they knew that she is a very rich lady so she started showing her very costly stuff. She said no 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 I don't want it my, for myself. Show me the just cheapest one because I just want to give it to my maid servant today. They said okay madam so they gave it in that range the minimum available range. So she paid and she started walking out. As she was about to go out, the owner of the shop, he entered. He had gone out for some work. He said, happy birthday, madam. She said, how do you know? Today is my birthday. She was happily surprised that people know that today is my birthday. He said, no, I, today just about 10-15 minutes before, your maid servant came here to buy a sari. I showed her some very low range variety, but she said no, she wants to buy the best one. Because today it is her owner's lady's birthday and you have invited her for your birthday. So she said, when she goes there for her birthday, she wants to take the best sari as gift for her master. Just imagine, this rich lady got ashamed of her approach, her attitude. To have big heart, you don't have need to have big money. To help, to serve, to love. You don't need to have big money or big position or your big authority. That feeling of love. That is enough. That is what Swami has come to. Light the lamp of love in each and human heart. There is another story. I remember today so many stories. This is told by all Swami, Chinnakathas. There was a rich money lender in a village. In India, the most powerful person, more powerful even than the Prime Minister, locally powerful, is the money lender. Because every farmer, every daily wage earner, Every laborer have to go to him. Every household has to go to him for money in difficult days. And what do they do? They give them money, take all their lands, their houses, mortgage them, keep all the documents with them duly signed and charge the biggest possible interest knowing that these pure people will not be able to repay and then their policy is when they are not able to repay, just grab their land, give them some little amount and that's it. That is the way they become rich, the landlords, the big money lenders. So this person was so rich and because he was powerful, power blinds, Swami says. 
absolute power blinds absolutely any power be it political power economic power financial power youth power degree power money power body muscle power power blinds so this man became so blind he would be rude with everybody even with his sons daughter in laws everyone because he knew that he has got all the money he will talk to them rudely and one upmanship like all were afraid of him because he was rich and he was the person who could give money even his own family members his wife his grand children his children his daughter in laws everybody was fed up with him but nobody dared to open mouth they used to respect him not out of love out of fear and he knew he knew that they all are respecting him out of fear they knew it but he got addicted to this respect so much so that if anybody fails to bow down to him or listen to him he will stop his finances his everything very rude one day in the evening when he was sitting he came out from his bedroom in the village they have their open space to sit he found there are no people today in the village nobody is come to do namaskar to him to say sai ram to him or to hello to him so he inquired from his servant what happened even my sons my daughter in law my wife nobody is at home and it seems there is nobody on the road in the village where are they gone he said master there is a great yogi rishi muni has come and he is sitting outside the village at the border of the village under a tree he is, seems to be man of immense spiritual aura his darshan is enough he is a realized soul and he has come it is a great fortune for our village that he has come at least he is sitting at the border of our village under that tree he has solution to each and every problem he can do anything he can change earth into sky sky into earth but he is so calm so pure pure so peaceful everybody goes and just sits around him one look one word one touch enough this man was now august he said who could be that person he knew in his heart that people bow down to him and prostrate even in front of him they respect him even his family members not out of that love or reverence only out of fear who is this person who is commanding such reverence such adoration such love from the entire village and the village he said not only this village all around thousands of people but he comes only early in the morning and again in the evening rest of the day he sits in his cottage doesn't take any offering from anybody he is one with god he thought in his mind that tomorrow before anybody else reaches that place he will go there first and try to know the secret even if he has to buy the secret <laughs> money minded person will always think on business lines even if there is mantra some secret even if he has to give whatever amount he will give he will give whatever is required with that thought early in the morning and he wanted to go alone because he didn't want people to see that he is going to bow down to somebody else he was so arrogant when he reached there the great rishi was in his cottage as soon as he reached and sat there the door opened and he came out hmm i know you have come to seek that your name your fame should spread all over and people should respect you adore you 
and even worship you. This is you want from me, isn't it? He said, yes, Bhagavan. This is the uppermost thought in my mind. I know people come to me, they bow down to me, but I know they don't actually respect me. I want that everybody should respect me, love me, adore me and even worship me. Give me that mantra, I should become like you. Why can't I be like you? Panchide, good thought. At least he had this good buddhi. Pura Janma Prapti. The Rishi said, I would happily give you that mantra and give you that entire process of achieving it. But I can see you are not going to live more than seven days. So no use in this birth. We will try next birth. Because as I can see, you are not going to live more than seven days. And this sadhana is great, very hard sadhana. So, as soon as he heard this, he lost his balance. He turned back silently. He came with great enthusiasm. He then turned back, reached home, closed himself in his room and started thinking. This Rishi Muni, my villagers, everybody tells that he has got that Trikal Drishti. He can know the past, present and future. When he has declared that I am not going to live for more than seven days. He is not even assuring seven days. Not more than seven days. It could be next moment. This very thought, it gave him that inner vision, that awareness, that enlightenment. What will happen when I will die? All these people who now they fear me, they must be praying that I should die. Because I have troubled them so much, I have kept all the documents of all the villagers with me. And for whom? With my own, for my own sons and daughter-in-laws and my wife. I know they don't respect me. I know they have no nothing, no love for me. For their sake, I am committing so many sins. No, 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 no. This is not right. After long deliberation and introspection, he opened his door, called his manager. He said, call all the villagers today evening. Those who have taken money from me, everybody should be present. In the evening, because it was a command, people did not go to that saint. They all had to come to him. They thought today we are gone. He is going to give us some punishment. This man, like a sage, he sat there outside his house. When the entire gathering came, he said to the manager, bring all the documents, all the gold, everything which I have taken from these poor people. One by one, announce their names, give them their respective documents and their gold, whatever I have taken as mortgage. The villagers were unbelievable. They were overjoyed but shocked. How can this miser, this person who will not give one naya paisa to anybody? What the change has come? But this man was adamant in the right manner. And he announced that my dear brothers and sisters, for the first time, these words came out from his mouth. Today morning I went to that sage and he has opened my eyes. He has told me I have maximum seven days to live and I don't want to carry this burden of sin upon myself for sake of my family. I know I will give them what is their due, rightful due. 
but I will not do any sin or any wrong for anybody's sake. I want to go light. I want to go without any burden of any sins. Enough is enough. One by one he called everybody, returned their documents and their gold and everything. And he, did, he said, I will not sleep today unless I have finished giving their documents because I do not know tomorrow morning I will wake up or not. Please cooperate with me today. Don't go from here unless you have taken your documents and your gold that you have mortgaged with me. And he gave everything to everybody. And what was his actual position, real earning that he gave to his wife, to his sons, to his daughter-in-law, everybody. Now the entire village was in tears. The entire game changed. His wife, his daughter-in-law, his sons, everybody. Please don't leave us. We don't want gold. We don't want any land. We want you. When such a sage is in our village, why we need to go anywhere else for anybody else darshan? You are our God. You are our everything. We will not leave you. And they started singing bhajan, samkirtan. We will even compel the destiny to change. We will compel the cosmic authority to change your destiny. Nobody can take you away from us. He said, nothing, I don't know, I'm not interested. I earned enough, seen enough. Now enough is enough. He said, no, now you have to live for us. And they started singing, praying. Seven days, continuous Akhand Bhajan by rotation went on and on. His entire village and this man was least interested in eating or drinking or sleeping. He became one with God. His aura changed. There was radiance on his face. Even the people from other villages, they heard, they, everybody came. And on the seventh day, the crowd was so huge, uncontrollable. In the evening, they were at the, all crying. Everybody was tears in his eyes. That point in time, the sage came and this man got up from his seat and prostrated in front of that sage master. Release me from my bondage. He opened my eyes. All my life, I had this foolish idea of ownership and doership. I forgot the cosmic authority. I forgot my God and more than that, I forgot my death. Then the master spoke. He said, you are not going to die. You wanted some mantra 